Hello, it's John Heaton, and today uh, I had a request from Bradley Cook to do to try and document the times when the ex Beatles met each other after the split, which is the kind of question that I can't resist. Uh, pretty much a favourite topic of mine. I'm not going to go through the whole of the period up until now. I'm going to more or less finish when John died. Um, Actually, I'm going to finish at Ringo's wedding in April of 81. So, and we're going to start off in 1970 and go more or less in chronological order. So let me just tell you where several sources I've got the information from, some of which are totally reliable and some of which are, depends. If you see a story appearing in more than one book or more than one source, or if one of the ex Beatles himself has talked about it, that tends to have more credence than if it's just appeared in one book. And there's a couple which I'm going to question as we go through. But this book was invaluable, Beatles After the Breakup from Keith Badman, 1970 to 2000. Although, as I said, I'm only covering the 70s. And he came up with another volume a couple of years later, volume two, Keith Badman also. Uh, Fred Seaman's book, um, Living on Borrowed Time, has one picture of him and John and Ringo in there, which I'm going to show you. And then the Lennon letters, superbly edited by Hunter, Hunter Davis, gives a clue of a couple of meetings in that book. Other than that, I can't remember exactly where I got the sources from, various books over the years, various interviews over the years. Start off with March 1970, just before Paul announced the split. Uh, Ringo went round to Paul's house in St John's Wood to try and argue about the to have the McCartney album delayed and that it ended up in a huge row with Ringo uh, being kicked out of the house, basically. And they wouldn't see each other for another 14 months. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to document every single meeting between Ringo and the others because he seemed to see a lot of them. And uh, on my list here on the right hand side, I've got the albums which appeared, for example, in 1970, had All Things Must Pass on, on which Ringo played a lot of drums on. John Lennon Plastic Owner Band from John, where Ringo played a lot of drums on again. And then Sentimental Journey Paul arranged one of the tracks. So. I'm mainly going to cover the meetings between John, George and the others because they seem to be um, less frequent or the, the meetings between John, Paul and George all have included a, few, a couple of Ringo ones in here. Um, December 1970 in New York, George and Paul managed to meet to, allegedly to try and sort out the Beatles uh, business differences but they ended up in an argument and a few weeks later Paul took them to court as we know. So. That was a pretty, 1970, they didn't tend to meet that often. Um, even uh, John, George and Ringo, although there was, a one, there was one occasion where on John's birthday, uh, John, George and Ringo were together and George and Ringo presented him with It's Johnny's Birthday, which was their tribute to his 30th birthday. Um, and then the lawsuit came, and, but no recorded meetings of George, John and Ringo at the time of that lawsuit. They didn't appear in the High Court, only Paul appeared in the High Court along with Alan Klein. Um, a bit later that year, May the 12th, Paul and Ringo met at Mick Jagger's wedding in Saint-Tropez Saint in the south of France, uh, which was their first meeting for 14 months. Um, then in the Imagine Sessions, summer of 71, George Harrison's on hand to play guitar, and that's well documented in a lot of the documentaries, like Give Me Some Truth and um, stuff like that, the Imagine film. Bangladesh, obviously, August 71, Ringo was helping George out on that concert, and the other two were at one stage going to appear or were invited to appear but didn't. And then, very interestingly, we've got I'm not sure the exact date, but it's just before New Year in '71, when John and John and sorry Paul and Linda went round to John and Yoko's um, small apartment in Bank Street in the village in New York City and spent quite a nice evening. And uh, that was the beginning of the peace breaking out between them, which was obviously very nice for the fans. We didn't know about it at the time, but Paul in this Badman book says. 
Linda and I went to see John and Yoko in New York and at first it was a little embarrassing, but once we got talking it was great. It was the first time we'd seen each other for more than two years. The only contact we'd had was reading one another's interviews and speaking through lawyers. But we got talking and it was really good. The vibes were right. The odd thing was that they were just like me and Linda. They felt the same about music and politics and we had the same sort of thoughts about Ireland like how wrong the government is to go in and crush the people like they're doing. John is a nice guy and so are George and Ringo. But there is still this resentment about Klein. I make no secret of the fact that I hate everything about him. We were never really the four inseparable mop tops the papers used to write about. We were just musicians who worked well together. But now I feel about them rather like the kids I went to school with. I, will, I keep meaning to go and see them, but I somehow never get round to it. The bad feelings have all gone and now we're all too busy living our own lives. Um, so that was nice to see. And then within three weeks of that meeting, uh, the Sunday Bloody Sunday event in Northern Ireland led Paul to write Give Ireland Back to the Irish and John to write Sunday Bloody Sunday. And that's another example of them being in sync with each other uh, in their solo careers. I'm getting a bit off topic here, but it uh, just reminds me of that superb interview that Sean Lennon did with Julian and with Elton and Paul just now, which in memory of John's 80th birthday. And Julian was very perceptive in their talking about how he thought the first solo album from John had a similarity to the one from Paul in terms of they were both pared down. And in general, he's pretty knowledgeable about Paul's music, which was nice to see. Um, anyway, back to the meetings. Um, 72, I don't have too many photos or reports to show you. I know there was one picture of George and Ringo arriving at the airport with Patty and Maureen, but I couldn't find that. Uh, then we move on to December 73 and we've got the sessions um, in March for the Ringo album. And uh, John, George and Ringo were there and Richard Perry in this book. Um, if I can find the page. March the 13th. Okay. Um, it was the first time I had met John, and to say that it was an exciting experience to work with him would be a gross understatement. It was really unique and quite special, and something I shall never forget. We started to run the song down. This is I'm the Greatest. It wasn't quite complete, so there was also that very special thrill of experience the song being completed in the studio by John Lennon. We all sort of gathered around the piano and chipped in our ideas and helped complete it. Then the phone rang, and it was George who said, I hear there's a track going on, is it okay if I come down? So I said, hold on a minute, and I asked John if it was okay. I mean, here am I, asking John if George can come down. So John said, well, yes, of course, tell him to get down here and help me finish this bridge. And that was very much like John. It was on that session that the three Beatles played for the first time since the split. Paul, I'm sure, would have been there too, but it was at the time when he couldn't come into the country. Um, because of his drug bust for marijuana in 72, I, I suppose. Um, so that's a pretty historic. And then, as we know, Paul was also on the Ringo album, so he would have probably met John in, uh, Ringo in London to record Your 16, uh, not, yeah, to play on Your 16 and um, on the song Six O'Clock, although for all I know, he might have just sent the, uh, the demos over to Ringo to do his vocal. I'm not, I'm not for sure. I'm not sure that they actually met in the studio, but anyway, 74, they all tended to meet each other. John and Paul met together for the first time since the split in March. And we've got the picture in, uh, in here. Not, it's a bit of a grainy picture, but it's pretty historic. There are John and Paul with Keith Moon. Uh, and Harry Nielsen was also on hand there. Um, John and George. There's a radio interview you can listen to on YouTube from December 74, around about the time of George's tour, maybe November. Um, and then John saw the George show at, Na at the Nassau Coliseum. Paul and Linda, Linda in heavy disguise uh, saw George in, on one of those shows. I'm not sure if they went backstage or not. They were trying to be incognito, so maybe not. Um, then in December, there's the thumbnail for this video is a picture of George and Paul together in December. 74 at the Plaza Hotel signing the final documents confirming the end of the Beatles. And John, and I think Ringo was supposed to be in there, although he's not in any of the photos. And then 
I'm pretty sure he was there, but John was supposed to turn up and refused to come across the park because <laughs> he said the stars weren't right and he signed it a couple of weeks later in Disneyland. So that would have been actually an occasion where all four Beatles might have been in the same room together, but anyway, it was not to be. The following year, 75, March the 24th, in Long Beach, California, Paul had a party to celebrate uh, Venus and Mars, or to celebrate, maybe not the release of Venus and Mars, but the recording, because um, March was before the album came out. Um, but um, George, George was at that party, and uh, there's, there's pictures of, of that. Uh, Xmas 75, again in the Badman book, and this is confirmed from Bob Gruen, the photographer. Bob Gruen was around Dakota having a quiet drink with John and Yoko, and the door, there was a knock on the door, and there was carol singing, and it was Paul and Linda came to visit them. They spent the next few hours relaxing, so that's a good story. Xmas 75. 70, 6 April the 24th, we have the exact date because it was a Saturday and Saturday Night Live was offering the Beatles the joke sum of $3,000 to come and reform on the show and John and Paul were actually in the Dakota watching that show and almost got in a cab and went down but didn't quite do it because they said they were too tired. The following day, Paul turned up at John's apartment uh, with his guitar and John said famously, uh, can you, do you mind calling first? I've just had a hard day with the baby and Paul took it badly, but John said in the Playboy interview he didn't mean it badly. Um, it was the last time they saw each other, unfortunately, but they did speak on the telephone and they were reasonably amicable by the time John died. So then we've got New York City in 76, George and John met with Derek Taylor, according to the Lennon letters, because it says George and Derek are in town and they will have the... Uh, the great honour to meet Sean Ono Lennon. So that's that's nice. I think that was the last time George and John met. Don't have anything for you in 77 and 78, officially. 79, uh, well, apparently John met Ringo at the Dakota, and I think this picture might have been from 79, but it also might have been from the 1980 meeting, because he, um, John and Ringo definitely met in 1980. Um, Come back to that in a minute. Uh, George Harrison had just come from the recording studio with Paul, although they hadn't been recording together, but when he started, I think it was the Playboy interview in 79, he said, I've just come from, uh, from seeing Paul, uh, but doesn't mean there's gonna be a reunion, but they just happened to be hanging out, I guess, during the, the mixing of Back to the Egg kind of thing, and uh, that was interesting. Um, what else have we got? Uh, January 1980, Paul tried to phone the Dakota to see if he could come round and smoke some weed with John, but Yoko intercepted the call and said it's not good time. So Paul promptly flew off to Japan, got busted, and, and we know what happened after that. And they, he didn't see John after that. Um, John and Ringo, as I said, they did, they did meet, according to Ringo, November the 15th. Maybe not quite sure if the date is 100% correct. Um, but it was around about that time Barbara and Ringo met John and Yoko at, at Ringo's hotel and spent apparently spent several hours together, very pleasant occasion, sometime in November of 1980. And then in the Badman book, he claims that John and Yoko flew to Los Angeles to see Monty Python and met George Harrison there, but I don't think that's true. I can't really think that they would have taken off and flown to Los Angeles in the middle of the... Uh, mixing a double fancy when they were trying to promote their album. I think they were too busy f to do that. And plus the fact John and George were not on brilliant terms according to the Playboy interview. So I don't think that that one's true. But uh, and even Keith Badman admits that it's, he's not 100% sure of that one. Um, but in November of 1980, George and Ringo were definitely together in the studio recording tracks for Can't Fight Lightning, which would then become Stop and Smell the Roses. And Paul and Ringo were in the, the Sugar Bear recording studio near Nice in July 1980, recording private property and uh, sure to fall in love with you and the attention for the I Can't Flight Lightning album, which that later became Stop and Smell the Roses. So John would have uh, got together with Ringo to, re to record with him in the new year. Apparently there's a session booked for January. Um, this is my copy of the 1981 front cover of the Daily Express, April, 
Ringo's wedding, when uh, we had the three Beatles reunite. And I tell you, after John's death, that was the best, about the, the best tonic you could have to try and cheer you up to some extent. It would have been brilliant if John had been there. He would have been there had he lived, but it um, wasn't to be. Uh, but a great picture there on the front of the Express um, for all the other three Beatles to get together for Ringo's wedding to Barbara Bach. So that was it. This is my notes here. It's a bit difficult to read. And again, this is not definitive. It's not, we're not absolutely sure if all these stories are accurate, but we do have some of them captured on in, in the form of photos. And we have a lot of them, which are, you know, the, the Beatles themselves telling the stories. And we obviously have the albums like living in the material world with a picture of George and Ringo in the gatefold together. So, and George and John documented on Imagine. So a lot of it is documented uh, in picture form. The thumbnail to this video is Paul and Ringo together in December 74. So hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.